All right, let's go into app sharing. This is important to us. I'm going to use, oh, sorry, I forgot. Another tool that we use, that I consider a tool, is Interfont. Inter is such an amazing font. Just go look it up. OK, we're going to focus on app sharing. And what does that mean in the context of Tandem? And I'm going to do a deep dive on how to improve um, that process. So app sharing, as I mentioned at the beginning, is the, the process that Tandem has in which you share which work app, let's call it, let's call it work app share, which work app I'm working on to give context to my teammates on what, what's going on in my world, right? Am I focused and, or am I talking to somebody else on top of a document? Or do I want people to come and help me on VS Code? These are some of the ways that uh, work app sharing works. And, and the ethos here is that we just want to make teams collaborate amazingly, right? Um, like great collaboration. Super important, right? We the reason why Tandem started is because I had my son. He was born. I started working remotely during my um, paternal leave, um, but like. By the end of my maternal leave, I was doing half half time, so I was working remotely most days, and it was just hard. It was very hard to collaborate, uh, and that's why we started creating prototypes. And Tandem was uh, is kind of the 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 V four of these prototypes, and it was helping us collaborate in a, at a new level. So, and app sharing was a fundamental piece of that. Um, and you can think of app sharing as if you if you open up Discord for anybody that has played games, um, or for those that do not know what Discord is, it's kind of like the Slack for uh, video gamers. But it has a, a nuance, which is basically like um, you you can see which games your uh, friends are playing, and then you can join their party. And this is something super common, like. That if you're playing, if you're in Discord and you, or even Steam, if you see if your friends are playing a game, it's like completely acceptable and fine, right? So what we're gonna bring is like, hey, how can we bring that same context to the workplace and make it like feel okay by doing two things: um, settings control, right? It, it, it powers great collaboration, but you should be able to control it. If you don't feel comfortable, great. Like, we're happy. Um, right now, we, we default to work apps being shared. Um, so transparent list. Right? So that's also something very important. We have uh, a list of integrations. And these are integrations. And this is like, these are work apps, right? And it kind of makes sense that if you're on a Google Sheet and you're working with your close teammates um, and you jump in a call with them, you want to make it very easy for them to join your Google Sheet, right? Um, or if, like Tim, as before, is working on VS Code and he's focused, I don't want to interrupt him. I want to respect his focus. And whenever he's done, he'll join me. He'll call me. No problem. So. I, we believe that these drives that that, that context drives better collaboration. Um, but if you want to control it, you can 100%. And the way to do that right now in Tandem is you click here, settings, then my preferences, then you go to your team, and you can define two things basically. The first one is in this current team that I'm selected, which is Wisp, I can say show my current app and the window title. So if I'm in Tenon product updates, Tenon will show Tenon is in Tenon product updates and the URL. Right. But if I don't want that to happen, I can just say, hey, just show the current app on me. So right now it says Notion. Doesn't allow me to go into this Notion document. Maybe like, let's say uh, 
I have a team which is um, just like using it's like maybe clients or you don't work with these people too often. You just want to respect your privacy and you just like do this. Okay, I'm happy to share which app I'm in, but I'm not comfortable enough to share the link to it. And finally, you can just say no app status. And it's like, okay, Bernard is available, not available in a call or not, but you don't know the app. And that's completely fine. It, it makes sense. Uh, you can get a lot of value from Tenant with, without these, but we believe uh, app sharing is kind of, it unlocks uh, greater collaboration uh, because it just reduces steps for anyone in your team um, from any direction, either from me going to a, a teammate or my teammates coming to me. So, yeah, settings control and transparent list, uh, great collaboration. Um, so it's, or, or a way to put it is default collaboration, but complete control. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so the design deep dive I want to do is how to make all these clear. And the first piece that um, I was working on this morning is right now it's a little bit unclear how to understand that you can understand this thing that I'm mentioning here, which is like, okay, we default you into that, but we allow you to control. Right now it's not clear that we're defaulting you into app sharing, and it's also not clear that you can control it. Um, it, it requires a lot of reading. So I'm gonna, the, the second one I wanna tag, which is like the capacity to control, there's one very simple fix that I've been working on, which is like, right now you have to click the settings button, then my like preferences, and then scroll to the bottom, and then it's like, it's not even in the context of privacy. So what I've been working on is just like, you click the settings button, and settings are like a little bit, like they, they basically split into clear buckets, Profile, preferences, and privacy and app sharing. Um, and these, I believe, will make it a little bit easier to understand that you can change that. And then this language here will also be a little bit clearer. That's, this is about app sharing, like how people understand uh, what you're up to. That's one piece. The second piece is the onboarding piece. And that's one the one that I want to do a deep dive. Um, right now, so better privacy, uh, it's called app chain onboarding. And the key pieces of these based on the feedback are um, permission yeah, dialogues. And this is, this is important uh, because we're not doing a great job at kind of preempting that a permission dialogue will come. The second one is um, show me that you're sharing my app. Um, show me, show me, show, teach me that you're sharing my app. Um, those, these are the two main ones. Um, right now, I'm just gonna reset onboarding just to get a sense. If I click tandem bot and then I click next, um, it says here, click on tandem bot, we've integrated with Google Docs, GitHub, and many other work apps. And then you click here, and then it opens up. And it kind of like loosely gives you a sense of what you can do, but it's not super clear, right? Um, so that's what I'm going to improve. Um, and I basically have, I have a mock here, which is. I'm just gonna take, okay. So let's say that I have, okay. So I'm, I'm gonna start with this piece first. Um, sorry. One, two, great. So let's say you already understand some things, right? And then you, um, I'm gonna put here, like the, the, the fundamental thing is that you, let's say you're in Notion, right? Um, and I'm gonna do, do 
this. So Jorge is asking, did you explore this missing it? We're doing a similar initiative and found it to be a big blocking. It was procedural. Uh, I don't understand what that means. I guess, did you explore this missing permission dialogues? I guess, uh, maybe you can give more clarity on that. Okay. okay, so let's say you are the first one in a team and you just want to understand what's going on. Or maybe you are like the third person and there's other people around, but you just don't understand what's going on. And then suddenly you have an app here, right? What, what does this mean? So an idea that I'm not sure if it's good, but I'm just gonna like freestyle it for now, is that we get a protection layer here of white, make it six. Oh, or maybe, okay, so the idea, um, this is kind of happening right now, but the idea is that we're gonna have a text that says, um, tenant shares work apps, which uh, currently focused Work app then choose the work app in focus with your team needs. And the copy can improve, but um, this is, I wonder if this is like maybe weird, but it's like, what if you have like a little onboarding thing and it's in it, has like some options here like these. This means oh so Jorge is saying can you dismiss the boarding? Right, we, we could dismiss the boarding. Um, and what do you mean by procedural? Got it. Okay, so these at the risk of being like super obnoxious, this is like, like kind of v one of how to make this clear. Whenever you are looking at Tenem and you yourself have an app that you're focused on, so like basically what we do is like, if the last app was let's say Notion and then you go into Tenem, I show myself as sorry, I need to, I need to restart. Cool. All right. Um, so if the last tab was Notion, that's the one I see here. So if, I, if that were to, to be the case, um, should I, what, what should I see here? Um, and the idea is that this, this will be about like 10 shares, the work app in focus with your teammates. Then I guess the next situation would be um, learn more and then got it. This is kind of crappy. Like, I don't always want to do this kind of stuff. Um, got it. Maybe we, yeah, got it. And then learn more is going to be like these. Um, this looks. This is really super good. Um, but the idea is like, so okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about two things here, which is user mental model and uh, knowledge, knowledge gap. Knowledge gap. This is a super basic UX principle. Let's see if we can find. This is uh, an okay way. The idea is that uh, a user understands so much about your app or about apps in general, and then your app requires so much understanding 
to, uh, to for it to be used properly, right? Um, so this is the knowledge spectrum. This is how much knowledge your user has. This is like, we could say that this is how much your, uh, your, your app requires, right? And these are, this is the gap that the user has to cross from what they know from previous apps or as, as much knowledge they have from your app, from landing pages and stuff like that, and how much they have to get. So right now what's happening in Tandem is that there is a gap in understanding how I'm sure it works. And we can solve these in different spots. One is like landing page, right? Just like setting very clear expectations. Another one is like, uh, it's like let's call it sign up, uh, download process. Another one is like in-app onboarding. And then finally, just like the app itself, make it simpler, right? Um, making it simpler means that like this is closer to the user. Um, maybe a, a better way to display this like this is how much knowledge is required for a given app, and this is how much knowledge a user has. And, and if the user doesn't get to this point, like you're screwed. Um, so you want to be, and it's it's fine to sequence it, but you, like each point where the user is frustrated is a drop off point, and we want to improve that piece. So. Um, but let's just talk about making the app simple because this is probably the biggest win. Um, simplifying the app options, right? The options that are available here are um, just like remove app chain, no app chain, right? That's an option. Um, has a high cost in collaboration and context of the of your teammates, but we could do it. That would simplify the thing a ton. Um, another thing we could do is, uh, what, what we could do? Okay, how would we, we simplify? What are some ideas to simplify these? Even even though they might be crazy. So, but just getting rid of these. That's basically it. Um, that's how you solve the app sharing problem. Get rid of it. Extreme simplification. Um, so let's talk about in app. I'm going to go from from bottom to top. In app onboarding, onboarding options. It's like um, basically, it's like onboarding experience where you bring your where I actively teach you how. Um, app chain works. Right? It's kind of what we're doing right now, but it's not very explicit and it tries to be short. Another one is uh, contextual onboarding when user is when user is in a, in a work app, right? In a work app and looking at Tandem. So basically this is like, Tandem will still focus from whatever you do. Sounds terrible, right? Like you're, let's say, um, so somebody, uh, I don't know the username, in the chat is asking, are you using a tool to do the overlays in your app or is that your native code? I'm not sure what you mean by overlays. If you refer to this thing here on the right, yeah, this is tandem. And I have activated my camera. If somebody joins, they kind of like pop up on top of me. And if you're referring to uh, what I'm doing in Figma, this is Figma, sorry. 
Um, maybe you could verify and uh, cancel. Thank you. Cool. So moving on words. Um, let's say that you, I, I just, I have 10 I'm open. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll wait for somebody to join. And then I go to VS code and boom, Tandem comes here and then it teaches me, hey, you just joined VS Code. We are, we're gonna put it next to your name and we're gonna share it with your teammates. Okay. So that's one option. Um, it's like, we're gonna still focus from whatever work I'm doing. Another one is like, hey, you were in VS Code and now you looked at Tandem. Now I'm gonna show you some design, some overlay here like, to explain you what's going on, right? Another one would be, when a user is in, in a call, right? So I join a call and now I'm like, oh, my teammate is in some app. What does that mean? So then we're gonna teach that. Another one is when teammate is in a work app. app and I'm looking at tendon, right? This is what, maybe this is like where a lot of attention, okay, so. Uh, okay, so our friend in the chat is asking, you were showing the Figma, the blue interaction overlay interaction to a user. It was in blue call. Yeah, 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 okay. So uh, Tenem has an overlay. Yes, so the quick answer is yes, it's native code. The long answer is when we onboard users, because we have a, we, we use a desktop app, we have a, some freedom on what we do to onboard. And when you call somebody, there's this call box, we call it, that pops up on the bottom right of your screen, and we want to draw attention to it. So what we do is like we create an overlay, and then we create this like big blue blob to center your attention around it. And we do this doing, doing native code. Yes. Um, it's, it's not a tool. Uh, and we're using Electrum, by the way, that's helpful. Cool. So moving on. So which kind of inboarding app options do we have? In app onboarding options do we have? So, you know, you're in a work app and we still focus you're in a work app and looking at tandem. You're in a call or when a team is in a work app and I'm looking at tandem. And this one is the main one where we, like th this, most of the friction comes here. It's like, oh, I just saw that my teammate is in a work app and I feel like we're comfortable. I don't know. Like they, people don't know that it's a work app. It's like, hey, they have an app. They think, oh, maybe I'm gonna go into YouTube and like my teammates are gonna see that. I don't want that. And it's completely understandable. Like I would never want to do that, right? Like um, if you're like, I don't know, like your wife messaged you, right? And you go into WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or whatever or messages. Um, that's not, we don't need to share that with your teammates, right? That's like personal life, super important. So this, this is something that's interesting. Okay, let's go into the sign up. What are some options to teach users about the app sharing that's gonna happen in the app while you are signing up or doing the download process, right? So I've seen some things during onboarding where you have like, it's basically like, it, like you have the logo of the app, you have some, you have some forms, right? And a button here. And then here on the right, they teach you stuff, right? And they have some, some text maybe, and maybe some image that tells you about this product and how to use it. I've seen that before, so that that could be an option. Uh, here's a small wireframe for for all you guys. Um, so this is like next to form. Another one that we could do is there's a natural pause while that one, right? It's like, you click download and then it takes some time for things to happen. So <clears throat> while downloading, show, teach one to three things to the user on how Tandem works. Cool. Cool. 
these are these are kind of the obvious ones maybe there's a couple more but i'm going to move on and then finally is the landing page right and i think that right now we're not doing a great job um so it says quick collaboration i mean we, we say it but not everyone reads this see which work apps your team is working on and join them in one click um and then we show it around um but it could be made clear right? so landing page um have a features section or use cases sections and there's many landing pages out there that, that kind of stuff and teach teach about it mm. have a demo video we've been working on, a, on one um, that explains the whole thing cool uh, what else these are the obvious ones right? so these are all the things that we can do and now the question is like which one is the best bank for our buck um, my take is that this one is is great because it teaches a lot of things, but it takes it takes time. Um, this one is requires a lot of work to prepare, do the copy, create the pages, um, and you don't even know if people will answer. Like we'll we'll check it out. Okay, in the sign up download process. This next to the form, I'm a little bit afraid of it because it kind of be, it can be confusing and like this is the focus of the page, this whole area here, and now you're selling that focus to teach me some stuff. When in theory, I, I just want to, I just want you to sign up, make it super simple, and then move to the next step. And the download process, it's very interesting, right? It's basically like there's this, a gap where a user has a downtime, and this is something that video games have thought for a long time and have done a, a very good job. Like if you, if you think of Zynga, um, Zynga style games, um, they basically had what, what in, in game, game design theory is like, uh, I've heard it called uh, loops and then closing, it's like opening, closing loops. And the idea is that uh, you ask, player has to do some action uh, but this action doesn't resolve immediately. Um, action doesn't resolve immediately. And then you populate the time while the player is waiting with other actions that are shorter, like mini actions in the meantime. And then what happens is that when the uh, main action finishes, it's very rewarding. It's like, oh, I forgot, it happened, this is great, right? Uh, because maybe this action mentioned, like in Zynga terms, it said like, it's gonna take 60 seconds to build your farm. And then, but in the meantime, you can like chop some wood and then go get a pet and then boom, your house is built. So, so there's some in design theory there. Um, and then doing the download process is great. Um, while it's not great, we've been thinking about the this process to just like get to understand like whether you wanna what do you wanna do with tandem, what's important about about you using it, and for us to understand uh, you and your your company a little bit better. And that's a pretty good point. So, um, and it's kind of contextual to that you've gone through a form, so it kind of makes sense. So I'm not sure I wanna like devote that time, the downloading time to teaching you how Tandem works because I can only do so much. So moving on is like the in-app onboarding options. And I think when a team is in a workup and I'm looking at Tandem, that's the one that I want to explore a little bit more. So kind of the, the so let, let's look at the mental model for a second before we deep dive into that. And um, Tandem's user mental model, right? The mental model that a user comes in is like, I've used like or like products for messaging, maybe a call. And I've used video conference software, video conferencing solutions like 
Hangouts. Hangouts. Hugs or Zoom. And what what else? I've I've called. I've used phones. Full phone. Some physical. Right. And then what? What else? Um, the mental model is like I'm remote sometimes or always. It's, and there's a lot of baggage to this concept. Um, maybe just to break this down is like I understand. Um, like, like affordances on video comms products. So a video icon and a mute icon and a screen sharing and a leave, those things are, um, are common. Then from Slack, basically what you learn is like list of teammates. I understand what it means to, I'm just going to call it, I've used messaging products. And I understand what it means to be active or inactive away. What else? So you come here, right? What, what do you understand? We cover the flow working together in person. You just know that like 10M, so from the landing page, um, from the landing page, 10M is a solution for uh, remote work communication. It's basically like in a nutshell, that's what people understand more or less. Um, and then from being invited from, from a teammate, it's probably way worse than that. Um, it's like, may, let, let's assume I've been invited to, to this thing. Right? It's like, I don't know anything. Somebody just sent me a, an invite link on my email and that's it. I don't know what the heck this is. And then the onboarding, like uh, sign up, download, doesn't teach much. We basically have a tenem download. We have a very little, a very small explanation. It's not even an explanation, it's like a quick uh, animated mock-up of what happened in the um, This thing, okay. And then when you join the app, you do the onboarding. Um, so this is like, I'm just going to call it uh, pre-existing knowledge right, of users. And then from here on out, this is going to be um, shift L and then I can create a line. And it always starts in black and I have a black background and that's why it bothers me that I need to change the color every time. So this, so this is pre-existing knowledge and this is like acquired knowledge as, as you on board, right? Great. Landing page, so there's like A, if you come to the landing page, B, if you're invited by a user, you download, so sign up, download. Um, I see a quick animation of, of things that happen, which is that thing here. I'm just going to take a screenshot and I'm going to make it super tiny and put it here. Right? And then I'm going to go to the landing page. And I take a screenshot. You know what? I'm just going to assume that they don't even scroll. 
that's kind of the basic, right? And make it very tiny. And the Figma gets pretty. I'm just gonna close some of these just to. Okay. So I'm gonna group this. This is a trick. And then when it's grouped, I can do flatten. And in theory, for some reason, sometimes it doesn't work. But the idea is like, how can you make this image smaller? Um, and sometimes it works. For some reason, it doesn't work today. Great. Oh, yeah, I remember now. Uh, it needs to have a little, like, another object. So now I have a wide rectangle and an image in a group, and now I do flatten. Great. It's not working today. All right, well, maybe it doesn't, I cannot make it happen. Whatever. Okay, so we have these two pieces. And then I sign up, I see a quick animation. These are all the pieces in the onboarding process that give me some knowledge. So I'm like leaving from here all the forms stuff. Uh, so 1A, 1A, sign up, and then onboarding, uh, doing onboarding. Um, so let's call it inst install, installing. It's nothing, and then in app uh, onboarding. I, so the current onboarding is if it teaches me. Click on it. Click on other people. That's basically what it teaches me. That's the first thing. Let's write down. Click. I can click on other people. Cool. And then when I click on people, there is a conversation. This this black thing in the bottom. Great. I can click on other people. I see that a, a call UI appears on the bottom right with a list of participants. The next thing that happens during onboarding is that you can click, click on a teammate to go to their workout. So, oops, here. Um, I can click on teammates, names, in a call, and I can click on teammates name and go to to Google Docs. Just I'm gonna make it very plain. Like this, but this is exactly what's happening, as opposed to what I'm saying that's happening. Um, And then finally, uh, when I come back, great, you jumped in your app next. OK, and then there's rooms. And that's basically it. So I see that there are rooms. And then we have a little explanation on what rooms are, but it's not, I don't think it's super obvious to some people. So this is essentially, in terms of like, uh, I've kind of illustrated the, the user knowledge, right? And from like landing with their predefined models, and maybe I'm missing some here, but this, I think these are essential, the essential ones to understand tandem. And then what what's the knowledge you acquire as you go into the app, right? Um, and I like this, this is useful for me to do because. Uh, I'm, I'm erasing some gaps that we've talked internally, but they were not super pre uh, present in my mind. So um, invitees have very little context. Invited teammates, it's probably the way. So just going to do it like this. Yeah, I think this is problematic. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, this is here on the page. This guy is here. 
So th this guy here is basically um, where is it here? It's an, a very simple email. I think it's like even simpler than these. Yeah. And then another thing, if, if I assume that people are in a landing page only see this thing, it's not super clear. Uh, illustration doesn't tell me much. What about video, right? And there's many apps out there that do that. It just kind of makes sense. Um, and if it's not, like replacing these, maybe it could be below. And then doing sign up is this download that right now it basically it doesn't list what are the top three features, right? I would want to do that because like every invited person will go through this download page, and this is an opportunity to use text to articulate some of the core features of Tenon, and we're not doing that. Um, and then doing installation, I think it's fine. We're trying to make it very quick um, so you, you get back to Tandem as soon as possible. So I'm just going to say this is fine. I don't want to think too much about it. Um, and then in app onboarding, I can click on other people. I see that all your IP is the bottom right. So this is what's happening right now. Um, and a few days ago, I, I was thinking about if you are an invited teammate, what should happen? Um, for, okay, so let's say you click on a, yeah, here is like, the, the problem with a dynamic, dynamic onboarding is that if your teammates are available, you can call them and then the boarding starts or like the, the, the teaching start, it starts. But if, I don't know, if they aren't available and they close the conversation, if there's an error, the conversation doesn't work for some reason, then that whole tutorial thing just doesn't work very well. So it's a little bit risky. doesn't mean that's bad, um, but I need to think about it very carefully. Uh, but basically it's like there's two possible flows. You are the first user in the team or you're a second um, user or second, third, etc. And when, when you're a second user, the question is like, are there other people available? Yeah, yeah, so, I'm gonna, yeah, cool. So in app onboarding, so the nuance here is like, um, for A in app onboarding as first teammate, right? I can click on other people, I see blah, blah. And then for B is as non, non first. And this is basically the thing, but basically there's gonna be another option. So, Let's, let's use well, maybe. the A flow is uh, teammate is available and the B flow is teammates are not available which this essentially becomes uh, like 4A so this 4B, 4A, this becomes 4A Right, it's like being the first one. This one is the most important one. Um, and the assumption here, from a technical perspective, I'm gonna put these in, in this comment, is our users mm, how is this? The user be available. The I call the team be available. I call the team. The answer. Do you know the team does? Do you know look 
Okay, so this is kind of like the three gates to you calling a teammate as a first onboarding experience. The first one is like, does a teammate look available? Are they green? And if not, what does that mean? Second one is, yeah, I, I see that they are green. I see that they are not green. What does that mean? I see that they are blue and yeah. Okay. What does that mean? I see that they are green. Over. I see that they are. Okay. I think this is like I can assume that's clear. I see they are green. They are available. But don't know what happens when I click. Um, cool. Well, I'll call my teammate. So, kind of the, the, the gate here for this action is Am I curious enough? Do I know this person well? And what will happen? And then will my teammate answer will is uh, basically it's like like what, what can happen the gate here is like uh, they are available and ready to help you learn more about tenant or um, another game would be like something like a call error happens. It's, it's not often, but it happens and it's unfortunate. Um, so, okay, just to kind of zoom out for a second and recap, um, this is almost helpful for me just to move forward. Uh, I'm talking about how to improve the app share, the understanding of Tandem doing app sharing and doing that through the onboarding process. Um, and specifically around um, like, like the knowledge and the teaching of that process. Just, this doesn't make sense. And I'm analyzing it through two um, lenses. The first one is the user mental model, and the second one is the knowledge gap. Um, we get essentially the same thing. Um, so, right. So I'm gonna organize these these thoughts a little better. All right. So, cool. Just gonna make it into a title. Okay. And so what I've done here is kind of like mapped out the pre-existing uh, knowledge for potential tandem users. And then what's the acquired knowledge as you on board? Um, and then I've listed what are the big pain points, uh, sorry, the big gaps that we could fill. And then here I'm looking at kind of the critical moment when you are available, when you can call somebody else. I'm just gonna put them in here. Um, but one of the problems with Figma is that I cannot tab. It would be super helpful, right? Can I do that? No. It's so helpful. Okay. So, yeah, these are kind of the mental gates that somebody has to go through to call somebody if we want to teach them without a bot and teach them doing more. And then, place, these are places where we can work people. So we've mapped out a few possibilities uh, and then talked about talked about loops here. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is giving me a picture uh, of kind of the, the landscape, the complexities, and and it, it's interesting how, just to reflect, like sometimes I like to start with UI and my the kind of the pre-existing thoughts out there, so they are not bothering my mind, and then I go into like the real thing, which is like like over like defining the scope and figuring out what what are the issues. And this is very helpful, um, but I need to uh, like unload my mind first, um, and then I can go back to that and freestyle. So, just as a, as a way to like prototype things here, and I'm gonna do it super very quickly. Is I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the screenshot, and then I'm just gonna do these. This is like super rough. Uh, so there is a frame, and then there's, and this is like ugly as heck, but um, this is, okay, this is going to be a play button. And the way I deal with that in Figma is I make a square, put a vertex in the center, click Alt, remove the edges, and then make it a little bit less, like a little bit more squarish. Um, and then I give it like a little bit of border. Great. So it's not centered. Great. Something like this. And maybe it's smaller. Cool. So this would be like the crappiest ever way to get clarity. Uh, there's this video, and maybe it says something like <clears throat> watch video. Right. So this is. Super crappy, but it kind of makes sense. Cool. Another option um, is we have something like these, and I'm just gonna like overlay. I'm gonna say uh, interactive demo, and what the interactive demo does is. Attractive demo is basically. Uh, I'm going to bring a, a component here. Attractive uh, demo is this thing. Uh, okay, just like that. And then there's tenon. And then you can click on things. And it actually works. And it's just like a, a fake desktop. And it helps you understand how it works. So these are like possibilities during the landing page. Uh, improved landing page onboarding. So these two ways, um, DS4, let me pick it up. These two require a certain amount of time. Like watching the video can take between one minute and five, and then playing with the active demo can be between like thirty seconds and two minutes, maybe. I'm just gonna put it here. It's like what, what's a what's a cost because the longer it is, the more people that turn or like bounce. So this is like one minute to six minutes, um, and then this could be uh, thirty seconds to two minutes. Right, and this could this tells me like maybe maybe there's a thirty minute thirty second video plus um, uh, an extended version, right? I, I haven't seen these out there. That kind of makes sense, right? You're gonna you want to give an overview and then you go deeper into it. And this one uh, maybe it should be guided. So I'm guided yeah, uh, interaction. And then maybe you have something here that's like guided. And basically what it does, it has like, it's like, it's a features list. Call in one click, talk in one click, right? And then has like um, some signal that this is like being selected. And then like jump into, Teammates workout. Something like that. 
and his body could be smaller. I've seen things like that in the past. And then you have blah blah, and there's like two options. Great. I think apart from these, there's like the things that I mentioned before, which are use cases, page, and then features page. But I doubt that a lot of people will go through here, and it's it's not it's good to have, but not super reliable. So let's move on to the sign up download, sign up download. And the thing that I was mentioning, I think the sign up download, um, I, I think I'm pretty sure we're gonna use it to ask about your company, which is a form. So while I could explore this area, I just think I will not have time I will not have space to to teach much about um, about it. Maybe maybe it's like we asked questions and then at the end of those questions, you hit hit download, and then you can learn about it. But I want the user to be focusing on opening the app that's been loaded and all that stuff. So it feels tough. I'm gonna leave it for for the end. Um, it feels not super high leverage. Um, okay, so these like. Invited teammate, you know, this is the one that I feel like I was a little bit naive on what's so. This is the current email, and really, what I would want, I'm just gonna bring from the morning. Let me go through. Good. This is what it is right now, and actually, what could be is. This is the basic, right? This is a main call to action. But then there's 10 and is dot, dot. You can do A, B, and C. And then, like, uh, watch demo. Right? Um, I'm gonna take a quick break. Go to last one. We'll be right back. All right. I think we're back in business. Um, I'm using a different mic other from AirPods, so hopefully the quality is good. But we're gonna wrap this up pretty soon. Um, <clears throat> so. So basically here, I was talking about how to um, onboard people that are have been invited. And maybe there's like a little watch video. So tenem is one phrase, one phrase. And then you can do use case one, use case two, use case three. All right, pretty pretty simple, and then a video. That maybe there is something. It's like what is tandem? Cool, tandem is blah 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 blah. Cool. So that's another possibility that I like to leverage the invited process, right? Then the next piece is the right. This. The other way around. Sorry. Right. We call we call these one, and then this is um, one B. This is one A. This is two, and then three is installing or is keeping it, and then four in app onboarding is first unit. So. Yeah, and then as first. And we already have the flow, so I'm just gonna like repurpose it and then see what we get. So click on tenant bot, you can click on a teammate to 
instantly start a conversation. I'm gonna do a quick iteration on these, just to make it extremely clear. Um, arrow pattern, pen drawn arrow pattern. I feel, um, I've, I feel I have some of these already in resources. Um, no, I don't. Great. Can I do it? Ah, okay, just for now, I'm just going to use not hand drawn iris, which don't look as good. But they will do the job. And I want this guy here, this guy here, to have a line arrow and eliminate this, this big. I'm making blue. And yeah, I'm gonna get rid of this thing, and I'm gonna rely on the arrow to point stuff. Okay. Um, I'm gonna rely on the arrow. And what if? So that now I'm, I'm kind of going crazy, but it's important. What if we use click on tenant bot, right? And then it's like that. What <clears throat> a company that does this pretty well is Basecamp. I really like how they do it. Um, and it's Basecamp, and so let's put it up Basecamp, and the other one is Roadmap. Roadmap. No, it's not Roadmap. Three drops. Oops, what happened? These guys. These guys here. What's the name of, of that product they have? I'm forgetting now. On run up. Great. Pre design, visualize your plan. Got it. Okay, we will run up. Cool. They have a little video that explains you how it works. Right? And then have all the features. I thought they had this like classical mode thing. I just I think it's fantastic. Um, and then Basecamp does this kind of like hand drawn error thingy. I think it's great. So I'm gonna so basically what I want to change here is like one click call your teammates, right? This is what we want. This is the main feature. It's super crappy, but this is a start. Um, instead of getting you to understand that you have to click on tenant bot, we want you to understand that what is it you can do. You can click call, you can call teammates in one click. Call teammates in one click. Right? Um, <clears throat> it's kind of weird. I'm just gonna do it like this, okay. and then maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's like this way. Okay. Alt, alt colors, then, then, then. So maybe it's like click on click on block here, which I think it's terrible, but let's put it just for the sake of it. Okay. 
maybe it's black. I'm pretty sure this is like their own hand drawn. I like it, but I'm not sure how the impact and boarding works there. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do this is because it sets a precedent on this kind of language where what I like about these, and I know it, it doesn't look great, is there's two pieces. One is like what you have to do, and the second one is like what's going to happen or what's the value you derive from that action. Um, Another one that could be kind of fun is something like this. Okay. Uh, union and we make it like this or the opacity and then kind of do something that's going to be uh, just going to make it feel like it's a little bit organic. It could look terrible, but let's try it out. For the sake of it. So we're looking at the bill or something like that. Oof, it's horrible. All right, let's try it with a more simple shape. Let's do these, do these, fold them, and this. And then this guy. Okay, so that's another option. And then what if? And and this is this is not an issue right now, but it will set the present on the language, and that's what I'm interested about. Um, okay, cool. So, click on ten and bot. There's the arrow. And then call to make more click. Click. And it says click. And then right. And then we are coming with the tree. What happens? Ah, looks horrible. Um, it's probably not as clear as these. But the value is not so clear. You're basically like teaching somebody to take an action blindly without them knowing what's going to happen, and then they kind of figure out what this is happening. Okay, this is a conversation. Maybe this, this is okay. And <clears throat> maybe maybe the simple step here is when you're here, it says. Tenem, Tenem shares, we've written this before, right? Here. Tenem shares the work app, the focused work app with your teammates. Your focus board gap is making this. And let's say that <clears throat> board apps are shared. With your teammates. Okay. 
right. Um, I think I'm losing a little bit of steam, so I'm going to take a break and uh, wrap this up, and then I'm going to continue working on this through the rest of the day and the week. So just to recap, uh, we looked at some product updates and mostly reliability and fixing issues, and we're going to be rolling out improvements on the boarding experience soon. And we have a couple of interesting features on the pipeline. Um, and then I talked a few, about a few of the tools that I've been working with. And um, if anybody has a specific request, I can go deeper on any of these in the future. And then finally, um, oh yeah, I, I also talked about Figma Ninja, right? And that you can uh, hit this link and subscribe to get the first chapter as soon as it's ready. And then I've also talked about um, app sharing and how we think about that. Um, how do we think about it in tandem. And then I've gone deep on the user mental model and the knowledge gap that users might have when starting to use tandem. And where are some areas where we can improve the onboarding experience? Um, and yeah, that's basically it. And Tim is coming to say hi. Um, so I'm just going to end the stream here um, and join him afterwards. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you uh, next week. Uh, feel, please feel free to add comments. Um, when you go into, let's see if I can do this. When you go into the, the channel and you click here, you can actually, uh, oh, here. If you go to the channel, there's usually like a little notification icon, and you can do that, and you'll be not notified when um, I go live. Cool. Have a good one. See ya.